And last but certainly not least, we have to talk about India's soft landing on the moon with Chandrayaan-3. Now, Chandrayaan-3 is India's mission, their third attempt at getting themselves to the moon and analyzing next steps for humans to go. And, and India has had a space program that has been growing for a very long time. And about three and a half, four years ago, we were following the Chandrayaan-2 uh, mission where they were trying to soft land on the moon on the South Pole, very close to where they landed here with Chandrayaan-3, and unfortunately had a mishap where the lander ended up hitting and impacting the surface of the moon. And the moon, in general, is a very difficult place to go and to land. We don't know that much about it. Most of the landing sites that were used in the early, um, you know, moon race years, the original moon race, you can see they kind of go across the equator of the moon, of the side facing us. Uh, since then, we've had China land on the dark, the far side of the moon, and we've had now Chandrayaan-3 land on the south pole of the moon, which that is where all of the lunar missions are going here when humans are going to go. It's going to be located at the south pole. And the reason for that is because the South Pole contains resources that are super important for human life, right? Uh, the ingredients for water, liquid ice, as well as different things that can be used for fuel, the same resource, as fuel to go back. Especially for a system like Starship, where you can go to wherever you're going, land where the resources are, mine them, extract them, make your fuel, and come back. That is why the South Pole is super important right now and why getting information about what's there is valuable. Now, the Chandrayaan-3 mission has a rover that will be investigating uh, the area to learn more information about what's going on. We're excited to see how that goes. But the big question for the Chandrayaan-3 mission and India soft landing on the moon, becoming the fourth country to ever land on the moon at all, never mind the first people to land on the south pole of the moon where all the action is going to be in the next few decades. They are the only successful ones other than China in recent history. And we're going to go over some of the other missions that have happened in recent history, even as, as soon as this past month that have failed. Um, to land on the moon, and there's some interesting trends on why they fail. So if we go back re in the most recent uh, attempt, Russia with Luna 25, which is the first mission to the moon since the 70s, since the last time they went with Luna 24, Luna 25 was attempting to land first before India, and unfortunately ran its issues. In the pre-land sequence, they were going to be making an orbital adjustment pre-landing, and it didn't happen. So the rover didn't have a chance to correct itself before landing to slow down properly and impacted the moon. And Luna 25 is no more. And they're not the only ones. iSpace uh, with the Hakuto-R uh, mission, they had a beautiful orbit and a descent. But then something happened between zero and five kilometers to the surface where they ended up believing that they had hit a ridge as they were coming across. And then the Hakuto-R mission estimated the final altitude that it needed to reach as much higher off the surface, five kilometers off the surface. So it actually performed all of the things, even the landing sequence, similar to what the Chandrayaan-3 mission just did, the Vikram lander. It did a nice soft hover and then touched down on the surface. Well, iSpace's Hakuto-R did that, but stopped and hovered at five kilometers and then just free fell until it hit the surface. So that's another one down. Space IL, the Bereshit spacecraft, which was uh, one of Israel's uh, mission, wait, this is a few years back where they were trying to land on the moon, their gyros ended up failing, which then cut the engine off about one to three kilometers above the surface and fell and impacted just like the last two. And so there are a lot of things that can go wrong in the approach to the moon. It's part of the reason why the Apollo missions and sending 
human beings to pilot this thing down was so important because how do you get a computer to know something that, that you don't know is wrong and be able to adjust for it where the pilot, the trained pilot can make adjustments based on what the sensors are reading or even use their own if they have to, which would be uh, almost a death sentence for almost anybody else. But when you look at an untouched surface of another body, it, it fractals. It doesn't look like you can just very easily, at least maybe there's a trained eye that can do this, but I can tell you, when you look at these the scent videos and, and you see, it, it, it feels like it ends much sooner before it actually does, or there's still so much more to go because of just how just untouched and chaotic the surface is. And, and we see this with the last three attempts of landing on the moon where they failed and finding that surface is super hard. And these are the things that need to be fixed before we go to the moon. But, but, the Vikram lander, Chandrayaan-3, the Indian Space Agency, the ISRO has figured out how to land on the moon and they did it uh, great. And they also failed. Like we said, Chandrayaan-2 had another issue where it, it impacted the surface of the moon and they learned from it. They, they made the mistake, they figured it out and they fixed it and they successfully landed and the rover touched down, rolled right off and out of the lander. I mean, they, they crushed it. So a huge shout out to India and their space agency and all the people of India for, for all the work they've done um, and how inexpensively they did this flying to space. You know, we have the SpaceX version of, of making space flight cheaper. And now we've got India's option of landing on the moon at a cost that is, astronomically less than anybody else. Um, and the only other people to recently land on the moon have been China with their Chang'e 4 and Chang'e 5 spacecraft that Chang'e 4 went to the far side of the moon and is the only uh, object and thing to ever go to the far side of the moon. And Chang'e 5 is a lunar soil return mission and Chang'e 6 will do the same. And so they are investigating the different potential areas that might be of interest when settling up a colony or something in space and traveling there. So we have this big space race that it's Space Warriors 2.0, where the, the battleground of the moon, and I, I don't like that I said battleground, but it's the point of interest, right? The southern pole of the moon is where all of the activity on the moon is going to go, um, or at least where all the interest is, because if you're going to send humans there and you're going to build a base, you want resources. And the best place is the South Pole, the Southern region. So we are going to see China, India, Russia's made a, a pass at it. We've got Japan and, and Israel. We know the U.S. has plans with Artemis, and the European Space Agency will be playing a part in that. Canada's Space Agency will have their astronaut going on Artemis 2 here to orbit the moon. It's a very exciting time for lunar exploration, for human exploration, and the race is on for a system that's going to bring humans there and back safely, and every time without failure. So we are seeing the groundwork of all of this play out before us. Very exciting times. I'm so happy to see India in this race and really making, bringing another perspective to the space race here and a flair of it that we didn't see in the last space race. It was Soviet and, and, and American, you know, that was the last space race. Now we've got India, we've got America, Russia, and so many others, China. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. My hope is that we end up doing a similar ISS style partnership where we can all be on the moon and we're not doing some crazy Mad Max version of living on the moon. We want competition's good, you know. Hey, figuring out which way works is great. The way that is that India has done this is different than the way that China would have done it or Russia for that matter, right? So there is a lot to be excited about, a lot to come, and just a huge congratulations to the people of India. And my last thought is if you're an American and you don't think this is a big deal or you're wondering wondering why it's such a big deal, especially if there weren't humans on board, you know, this is uncrewed, just robotic, 
we have become really privileged in America that we've already had our moon landing. I mean, I can't tell you, there's probably 20% of the people that I talk to about space that almost immediately go into uh, moon landing denier stuff. Like we're, we're so privileged that it's just commonplace to say, oh, well, they didn't do it. It didn't happen. Um, this is India's first time touching on another planetary body, another surface that's not Earth, outer space, another place they've landed successfully. If you don't think that does something to the psyche of a people, to how far people will dream and, and have their own expectations, I think, I think we're in need of that kind of hope and, and dream amplification, right? That's one of the beautiful things that science and space in particular provides is it's the infinite frontier, right? doesn't matter how far you can aim for, there's still more, and you still might not even make it that far. But you keep doing that. You keep reaching farther and further every single time. You will find yourself in a place you never would have imagined. So for India, for a country that's trying to um, put itself on the world stage and, and be a leader globally, this is the kind of thing that is out there and, and could transform the future in ways we don't even understand. So um, that is why the Shenryan 3 mission is so important and is probably going to be a ripple effect that makes Space Race 2.0 maybe 2.5, <laughs> uh, a big a big thing because of their success here after many failures. And I think that's the perfect amount of motivation, that it's hard, it's difficult, not everyone can do it. Even people that have done it before, like Russia, can't just redo it. It's a good lesson that you really, really need to work as hard as you can and work together as a team. So it was beautiful to see all those smiling, excited faces as they realized they actually did it. That is the power of space and exploration, and I cannot wait to see them launch some human beings out there. See you on the next episode of Today in Space. See ya.